Welcome, my wonderful students, to yet another week of learning. I hope you're doing great. Believe me, we so miss all of you. Okay, we started last week uh, to treat the novel Withering Heights. We are continuing this week. Last week we dealt with the plot, so this week we'll be advancing. We will be checking up on the themes and, of course, the setting. So, by the time we are done, you should be able to point out the themes and discuss them, and you should be able to understand the setting of the story, okay? Before we go, let's do the needful. Wherever you are, you're standing, you sitting, please take solemnly our class affirmation. There is a tree in every seed, I will grow and blossom. The world will hear my name, the world will hear my voice. Having said that, remember that we are eagerly waiting to hear your name, to hear your voice. We know you can do it. All right, make yourself comfortable, get whatever you need, be it your writing material, be it your textbook, so that you can flip through and make references. And let's roll. Can you try answering these questions, please? Number one, what do you think about the story, the story of Woodring Height? What do you think about it? If I call you up, I say, come as a critical uh, reviewer to criticize that book, to do a review, what will you think, what will you say about that story? I have my own reservations, I have my own impressions. So that is one. What do you think about Heathcliff, that character? Having read that book, what do you think about that man? Okay, what is your summation about that man, Heathcliff? Hmm? Do you think this story ended well? As an artist, do you think it ended well? Did you? Okay, and finally, can you classify this story? If you are able to answer these questions, if you're able to think and look deep and try to come up with your own answers to these questions, then it will help you and give you a clearer exposition and understanding of this work within Heights. This is not an assignment. It's something I want you to do. Ponder over and try to answer on your own free time. Okay, let's get to work. The themes in the work. What did we say themes are? Themes are the central messages, okay? Those lessons, those important information that the author, the writer, wants you to take home with you, wants you to grasp, you know? The, the plot, the storyline is built uh, around exposing these messages to us. And in the book, We Dream Height, we see themes, messages such as love, deceit and betrayal, revenge and retribution, class issues, good versus evil, childhood, marriage, parental responsibility, and so much more. By so much more, I mean that you can come up with other themes that are not mentioned here, all right? And I expect you to do that. That might be one of our activities, okay? But for you to bring out these things, you need to read the work. Read the work. Read it, then you will see more messages embedded inside. Okay, let's take these things one by one. Let's start with love. In this book, we see love, all manner of love. It comes in different shapes, shades and sizes as far as this work is concerned. We see undying love as displayed by Heathcliff, for Cathy. It's the love Heathcliff had for Cathy that drove him to all that ma kind of actions, to insanity, all the things he did. It was spurred on by love, all right? Both of them growing up, we can see they had some level of love towards each other. And as they grew, it actually intensified. But because of class issues, 
uh, Catherine had to opt out and go f uh, t uh, for Edgar. Now, that's another kind of love. The marriage between Catherine and Edgar Linton. Call that love based on selfishness. I don't know. But is or, 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 I don't or, I don't know what kind of love to call that. But that's also love. We know that Catherine also loves Edgar, but not as much as she loved uh, Heathcliff. But because of class issues, she had to drop uh, and pick uh, Edgar over the street urchin Heathcliff. We also see infatuation. This is between Heathcliff and Isabella. We see that too. That's another kind uh, of love. And if you go further, you also see uh, love between the second generation, between Catherine and uh, Hayton. So all through the work, love is portrayed, love is shown. Is a book woven uh, around love and hatred, all right? We see deceit and betrayal. Come on. In fact, that actually gave a uh, rise. It gave, it gave a body to that work. All right? Deceit and betrayal. It, this theme actually runs through the whole plot, okay? Now, Heathcliff is the king of the seat as far as this work is concerned. He appears to be a very helpless young chap picked up by Mr. Ensure. But as this guy grows up, we begin to see another Heathcliff. In fact, we see another kind of person, all right? We, we see him coming up with all kinds of trickery, blackmail, to take all that belongs to his benefactor. This is someone who picked him, you know, from the streets. But then, because of one thing or the other, he, he, he just betrays the guy's love and at the end of the day, rules the man's household he takes over uh, everything about within height we see him deceiving catherine to marry his son in order to harvest uh, uh, inheritances of trush cross uh, grange or oh, we see all manner of betrayal even at the time edgar edgar saw through what he uh, cliff was planning he wanted to you know annul it he sent for his lawyer but Heathcliff had to uh, bribe the lawyer from coming so that nothing can be changed or annulled. We see betrayal all around, and particularly from the character uh, Heathcliff. Now we see also revenge and retribution. All right, revenge was what drove Heathcliff to go out there, make money, come back, and come on, destroy. Uh, Hindley, destroy Catherine, destroy Edgar, destroy everybody. Okay? It was revenge he wanted to carry out on Hindley for treating him so badly, so poorly, so wickedly when they were younger. He tried to give it back to him. In fact, he, 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 he uh, gave um, Hindley back his own coin. Alright? He gave him back his own coin when they grew up and ended up overtaking and collecting his inheritance from him all right we see him uh, you know venting his revenge on catherine his soul uh, 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 the love of his life you know you know it, it's all about revenge but at the end of the day he did not go scot free we know that he was tormented for 18 years before he died he became ill too so you see those that also plan evil and cause other people harm, they too will not go unpunished. Class issue. By now, it's no longer news that uh, Katri left Heathcliff because they were not the same class level. Catherine came from the upper class, while Heathcliff was a nobody. And that was, you know, one of the issues rampant back then in England, all right? So this author also tried to use this medium to talk about it. Good versus evil, childhood, marriage, parental responsibility, and so much more. I think I'll stop here. I will leave you to try to break it down, try to figure out and explain these themes where they occur. It might be one of your activities to come up with much uh, with more teams as far as this work is 
consign. So let's proceed, okay? Certain, certain, certain. When we say certain, what are we talking about? The place, the action, and the time uh, the action occurs in any work of act, all right? We are in Enugu here, so Enugu is our setting. So, as far as Redwing Heights is concerned, the actions in the story took place in very important, three important places. Mention Redwing Heights, Trust Cross Grange, and the malls in between these two buildings. They are neighbors, okay? So, we see Redwing Heights that housed um, Catherine, Hindley, Enshaw, Heathcliff, and then Trosh Cross Grange, the house, uh, Edgar, Isabella, and the Lintons. We see that too. All right. We see the children, you know, doing the explorations in the mall. So the activities in these, the actions in this um, work took place in these three locations. Okay. And uh, Widrin Heights was presented by the auto light. Uh, as a very dark, cold, unwelcome place, spooky, if I will use that word, while Trosh Cross Grange is a direct opposite of what Woodring Heights is. We see it housing very refined, you know, a, a, a correct, a, you know, civilized, acceptable gentlemen and ladies. The setting of the work is 18th century England. Remember Lockwood said it's 1801 as he tries to enter some things in his diary. So 18th century England. If you can, you know, try to figure out, picture in your mind, what kind of time, what kind of dressing, what kind of scenario it might be during that period, it will give you a better appreciation of what the author has done with this work we're doing high. So don't forget set in England, 18th century, and the actions to place in Windred Heights itself, Trosh Cross Grange, and then the little vegetation, the moors, in between these two neighboring houses, all right? So, our recap, that's our summary. I told us that the novel has a lot of messages such as love, marriage, death, forgiveness, revenge, and so many other so many other things I expect you to, you know, jot out as you're reading and not just to jot them out. You should be able to explain these things. You should be able to, you know, talk about them, discuss them. If we say, oh, discuss the theme of love, discuss the theme of marriage, discuss the theme of revenge and retribution, you should be able to do that using the characters, okay, using scenarios from the book. To explain what you're talking about now don't forget the book was set in the 1900s sorry in the 1800s 1800s england all right in trush cross grange widowing heights and the moors in between all right that's the time setting of that work and i will tell you something oh my god it's a book i actually enjoyed and i know it's a book anyone who enjoys um spooky settings kind of horror ghoulish stories with twisted tones will enjoy now our next uh area of concentration will be on the characters so i will implore you to prepare yourself towards that direction don't forget to check up the activity sections for work and please do them call on your friends who are yet to come online to come online Till we come your way again, stay safe, be healthy, God bless you.